Sunday, 13 February, 2270, 10.45 hours. I think I know Sunday, 13 February, 2270, 18.45 hours. I think I know why they chose me. It's because I don't want to hurt anyone. Oh, in the abstract, I hate the Empire and its values, and I want to do anything I can to help tear it down so good people can build something kind and compassionate in its place. It's just, in the concrete, I don't want to hurt anyone to do it. I don't want revenge. I don't want to make the rich bastards suffer. I just want them gone. You can call me a weak, brainwashed liberal if you like. You can call me an objectively counter-revolutionary stooge of the historically doomed ruling circles. And I'll call you pretentious, but that's about it. Monday, 14 February, 2270. 0206 hours. We used to say the question was, reform or revolution? Then someone pointed out, you only get reform by threatening revolution. I suppose that means governments that actually get overthrown are just those that call the people's bluff. Monday, 14 February, 2270, 0433 hours. There is no such crime as attempted fraud, but there is a crime called attempted murder. There is no such crime as involuntary fraud, but there are several crimes of accidental killing. With the killing of people, the crime is modified by the intention and the success. But in lying to the government, or in business, the crime is simply trying. Monday, 14 February, 2017, 16.52 hours. Make a gesture on your pad, and the screen clears. Advertising written by non-sentient AIs, marketed to demographics that don't exist, to sell products manufactured because glitching algorithms incorrectly said they'd make a profit. It all disappears from your pad's memory, never read. If you don't look too closely, it all looks automated and automatic, efficient and effortless, magical and mechanical. But I'm the gremlin in your pad. I'm the magic. I'm the man machine. Tuesday, 15 February, 2017, 04, 25 hours. Press a button or speak a command. A valve opens and water flows from a tap in your room. How does it work? You don't care. It's magic. It's your slave. You don't care how it works, just that it obeys. What do you do when your credit slave develops a mind and a life of their own, tries to escape, becomes ill when it's inconvenient for you, even tries to argue with logic and morals? Obviously, you hit them until they stop. And what do you do when the magic button on the wall is late in responding, or operates when it shouldn't, or becomes unpredictable, almost like it's got ideas of its own? First instinct, hit it until it starts behaving again. You can't fix the tap. You've no idea how it works. And when someone suggests you find out, 
You don't say so, but you think it's beneath you. Fixing things is work for strange, unwashed people who are interested in boring, technical things. You need them, and you barely tolerate them as long as they are silent, invisible, quick, as convenient as the tap itself. You can't fix your human slave either. But there's a whole class of people who make and repair slaves for you. Managers, police, psychiatrists, experts in tactical propaganda, consultants in opinion formation, professionals in subliminal enculturation. The great secret. All they know how to do is hit you until you behave. It never quite works, but it works just well enough, until, very suddenly, it doesn't. Tuesday, 15 February, 2270, 08.54 hours. But do you respect me in morning? That's what he said, in his Russian accent, looking up at me. With that knowing, lopsided smile of his, sitting up, in the half-shadows of the doorway of an abandoned block, wrapped in a dirty blanket, begging for work. It was dark and starting to rain. No, rewind. It was my thirty-fifth birthday. I had a date. I had had a date. Not sim, actual meat. No show. So, I got a bit drunk and set off for home, feeling a bit lonely and sorry for myself. I passed a homeless guy trying to get comfortable in a doorway, early thirties, hair already wet. I offered him a place to sleep. You are meaning sleep and, he asked, and made a gesture with his fist near his mouth. I said something like, that too, if you like. But do you respect me in morning? he asked with a grin. Might have been a Georgian accent. Or Ukrainian. I don't remember what I said. Something like, if you say yes, yes. If you say no, I'll respect you just as much. Ah, you are a gentleman. He gathered up his blanket and backpack, and we walked to my pod. Inside, he accepted my offer of a shower and a shave, while I made us tea and something on bread. He sat in my gown next to me on the couch, and we watched the news on the vid. We spoke little by little, as we finished the sandwiches and tea, then moved on to the cheap vodka. He got a bit drunk. I got a bit drunker. At some point, he must have told me his name. Nikto. I reached out to. A leg? Hand? Hair? I'm not sure. I hesitated. He leant forward and kissed me. No, no, not like that. He kissed me on the forehead. Tuesday, 15 February, 2270, 13, 16 hours. We can't have made it to the bedroom. Because I remember waking up on the couch, the vid still playing with both of us now under his filthy blanket. I made us breakfast, trying to figure out what I wanted, and how to ask for it. Stay with me a few days, hey, maybe even a few weeks, until you find a place of your own. Drop in sometime if you need a couch to sleep on. I've got to go soon, but if you fancy some more vodka, you could come back at, say, 2200. No pressure. 
Let me make love to you right now and never stop. Okay. Maybe not that last one. I asked about family, friends, work, men or women. He just shrugged. I said I had to go in an hour, but if he wanted to come back and... When he needs a place, help get his life back together. He smiled, shrugged, pushed me gently backward on the couch, and laid his head on my chest. He said, Yesterday Nikto has no friend. Maybe tomorrow same. Today Nikto and friend has one hour. We spent the hour like that. Then we swapped tags and went our separate ways. At midnight he knocked on my pod door. Exactly midnight. Shower, tea, sandwiches, vid, wake up. Not in bed. A few words, shrug, lopsided smile. It went on like this for a week. Eleven days. I talked, and he was happy to listen, but always avoided answering any questions about himself. Then, one morning, his smile was sad, and he said, Must go for time, but friend is good. And I never saw him again. Later, I found out Nikto isn't a name at all. It's the Russian word for nobody. It was only then I realized I had never told him my name. Tuesday, 15 February, 2270, 23.47 hours. The propaganda had been ramping up for well over a year about how the Martian colonies had developed a strange new religion and were poised to overrun Earth with it, somehow. It allowed children to negotiate their own future arranged marriages. It encouraged women to have babies early in life, raise them alone until puberty, then let the male-dominated education system mostly take over, while the mothers switched focus to their careers. Translation Mars was getting uppity, economically breaking away from Earth by degrees, and Earth needed to bring them back into the fold. By Earth, they meant the Euro-Asian coalition. It was a battle for the soul of humanity to be fought with both gentle persuasion and precision force. Both terms meant drone bombing Amazonas City. In the first days of the war, we were promised it was to be a swift, decisive liberation over in a week, followed by generous reconciliation. After three months, it was a sure victory on the horizon for law and order, beneficial to all. After six months, it was to be a long, gradual process of taking back what had always been ours. After five years, it was a noble and necessary endeavor, marred by the short-sighted leadership of the previous administration. I think they still haven't completely withdrawn. Ten years in, and it just didn't make the news anymore. Wednesday, 16 February, 2270, 10.46 hours. The party was there right from the start. Solidarity with Mars. Self-determination and freedom for our red cousins. No fear, no faith, the slogan had it. Netcasts rallying support. Debates taking down pro-government journalists. Alliances between pro-Mars and anti-war groups. Every week. Events to raise credits and raise spirits. Every month, sometimes more, a major public event. Exhibitions, 
marches, concerts, sky painting, solo protests, and mass gatherings. Musicians and entertainers who hated everything we stood for, they joined hands with us on this one issue. And suddenly their shows and albums got scathing reviews, or they disappeared from the media entirely, and their fans mysteriously couldn't remember them. The usual idiots were whipped into the usual panic by the usual lies. People who couldn't find Mars on a map of the system ranted about disintegrating the planet with mass drivers. We gained hundreds of new members in a weekend and lost hundreds more over airline technical disagreements. But public feeling against the war surged. The people didn't know what they wanted, but they didn't want this. Wednesday, 16 February, 2270, 1840 hours. The Big No protest. Two million in London. Real presence, not sim, that was vital. Three million, some said, in Tokyo. Washington, Paris, New Moscow, and a thousand smaller places, connecting with a hundred symbols and one voice. It was a perishingly cold day. My town managed three busloads, about five hundred people, mostly students, creatives, immigrants, the unhoused and undocumented, and a scattering of old hands. We sang on the buses, we danced and beat drums in the waiting areas, and we sang again as we marched, painfully slowly in the streets that couldn't take us in the bitter cold. We actually felt this wasn't purely symbolic, couldn't be futile. The people could speak and be heard, and their voice wouldn't be ignored. The next day, the very next day, half of Amazonas flattened. Death toll estimates kept rising by a thousand each report. Scenes of survivors fighting over oxygen. The second day, another strike, and all Martian media went dark. Thursday, 17 February, 2270. 03-16 hours. Earth troops dropped in. Earth admin set up. Destroy homes and lives, then graciously offer to build it all back up again, in return for dropping all this silly independence nonsense. And then act all surprised when your shiny new government building is blown up by one of your own stolen bombs. And, even better, the next. It seems... People who won't fight for their lives will fight for their dignity. Thursday, 17 February, 2270, 04.42 hours. It's surprising what you don't miss when you're offline or in jail or here. People you used to see every other day and called friends, their absence doesn't leave a hole. Vid shows you used to plug yourself into in the morning before waking up properly. Audios you used to listen through at the end of the day when you were too tired to do anything else. Little personal dramas, celebrity gossip, politician scandals followed by some is that opinion pieces on the net about how it's the end of everything or the start of something. They don't want me affected by high temperature ephemera in case it gives me inappropriate ideas. Everything in my bottomless database of media is at least ten years old, even the instrumental music, even the porn. I am outside of time. 
I am timeless, I am eternal. Events are marked by hours, days and weeks, marks on a calendar based on the rotations of a planet gigameters away. But there is not even the rhythm of sleep to make them real. Thursday, 17 February, 2270, 1641 hours. We've all had that thought about our lives, that it could all be an elaborate hoax. But anything could be an elaborate hoax. A year, call it a year, in a cell, with just an artificial bullshit machine for company. You can ignore the machine and take what you want from the time outside, and live on memories, or live in fantasies, even if they're just fantasies of what you'll do when they eventually decide to let you go. Say they move you to basic confinement for some imagined transgression, something so heinous. They convict you to never see the world outside the facility again. No time out. No artificial voice. Maybe super basic. Nothing to read. Soundproofed walls. Constant dim light. You still know it will end. Even if you know you'll never be free, you know you will, one day, be less unfree. Then, they make you an offer straight from the devil. You get to live in a box, forever, or near enough. Your body is taken care of, but you can barely move. They assure you that, soon, you won't mind. Wires and cables, screens and speakers, microphones and cameras, all your senses monitored by the machine, all your actions noted. Your mind is endlessly awake, always at high performance. You were always bright, but you got tired. Now you're a genius, and you can't turn it off. You do a great service for the Empire, no, they quickly correct themselves for humanity. And you can never leave. Not once, not ever. Finally, they found a way to remove all hope. And to make it sound like a great gift. So, what if it's a lie? What if it's just another form of basic confinement, in another jail cell, in the same facility? What if it's all fake, a perfect way to kill the spark of hope that always sustained you before? The purpose of every lie is only incidentally to fool you. The real purpose is always to break you. Friday, 18 February, 2270, 01, 14 hours. They were right, though. Soon enough, you don't mind. All a hoax. To break you and make you thank them for it. Even though, if this thought occurs to me, that must mean it hasn't worked. I think, therefore I am. I think it might all be a lie, therefore, if it is a lie, it hasn't fooled me. A truly broken man cannot conceive of what it means to be broken, because that would mean a notion of what it means to be whole. VM stands for Vortex Manipulator, but it also stands for Virtual Machine. No, 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 no. They're not that good. They are that obsessed, but they're not that clever. I once read that freedom is the freedom to say two plus two equals four. 
even when they say it's five, even when they say it's four, and you say the same, but not because they say it. Reality is a dangerous concept. But surely, freedom is the freedom to ask, what does two plus two equal, and to accept or reject whatever response you get, for whatever reason you like, even if the response is a slap in the face, or none at all. So a more dangerous concept than reality is that of choice, even if the reality is true and the choice is an illusion. Friday, 18 February, 2270, 06.46 hours. Rousseau said, Some day the slaves will rush to put on their chains. And he was proven right. But a slave who loves their chains could come to love something else. If you buy loyalty with credits, someone else can buy a different loyalty for a little more. If you make the people love you, you create the possibility of hate. The battle for power is never decisively won, because a power structure can't exist without a power struggle. Friday, 18 February, 2017, 15, 15 hours. The revolution happened long before I was born. We lost. So we spent our lives trying to figure out what we did wrong two centuries ago, so we can do it right next time. Waiting for the perfect explanation, the perfect theory, the perfect opportunity. There's no end to the things you can find to do while waiting on God. Friday, 18 February, 2270, 1652 hours. Everyone wants to save the world, but no one wants to clean the floor. Saturday, 19 February, 2270, 03, hours. A declaration of love is a demand for love. A declaration of hate is a plea to be noticed. Saturday, 19 February, 2017, 14-13 hours. We always think owning things will make us happy. People are things too. Saturday, 20 February, 2017, 03-07 hours. A fanatic is one who can't bear to ask what they'll do if they win. Sunday, 20 February, 2017, 05-48 hours. You can't end suffering by sharing it. Sunday, 20 February, 2017, 11-11 hours. The terminal is very quiet. No ships going through for... days. I am a Paraspace Conduit Orbiting Satellite, VM-42. I am Departure Terminal 3. Home is a group of fourteen singularities, twisting space-time to open wormholes. For the Empire. In heaven, everything is fine. You've got your good things. Sunday, 20 February, 2017, 16.32 hours. I always adored the way he shook his hair out of his eyes, sitting on an old-fashioned bar stool, barefoot, strumming that guitar. I think he only knew four chords. Songs about falling for someone you can't have. Songs about holding hands in the park. Songs about growing old together. Singing about breaking up, getting back together, and it all falling apart. What could I ever offer except infatuation? Sunday, 20 February, 2017, 